I guess when you speak to a lot of football people in Newcastle, they associate the name Adamstown Rosebuds with, with football. Uh, tell us when the club was founded and a little bit about the early days. Yeah, uh, founded in 1889, Pete, and, and uh, it was apparently the, the local priest, uh, Reverend John Penman, I think his name was, and he suggested to a, uh, a, a Scottish miner uh, who was playing football for Hamilton Athletic that he should start a team in, in, in Adamstown and that was the uh, the first uh, he and he also promised him half a sovereign apparently to help him start start the club so his name was Peter Finlinson and there was there was uh, he had about four or five brothers all footballers and he, he thought it was a great idea because there was there's probably seven uh, players in Adamstown playing for other clubs back then in, in the top league so yeah that, that, that was the, the, the start of the, this great club it may not have been that windy back in uh, 1889 either no it's, it's true <laughs> Fever. It, it was apparently it was a thundery night uh, they they organized a, a hall on the 12th of July to to uh, start the formation of the club and there was a, a freak thunderstorm and uh, they were going to call it off but uh, Peter Finlayson uh, the this, this, this Scottish footballer playing for Hamilton Athletics said no way we're, we're going ahead with the meeting and, and they had to walk from, from certain places. You can imagine those days in 1889 uh, and I think they, they, they were expecting 70 people to turn up, but uh, 20, 20 people turned up and, and uh, that, was, that was the start of the, uh, the formation of the club. Mate, we're here at the ground across, across the road from the, from the club. Uh, was this the original ground? It is, it is Pete, and, and the club over there was Adamstown Rosebuds Football Club. Um, back in the uh, mid-80s, uh, Newcastle had no representation of a, a team in, in the National League and, and uh, uh, you know, everybody at the time looked to Adamstown to, to put their hand up, at, which, which they did, but was probably a, a very bad business move because uh, that was the, uh, you know, we, we lost the club over it, you know, from, with the expense of being playing in, in, in a national competition. Mm. Having said that, they did win the National Cup as well, so yeah, uh, yeah but that was probably uh, the downfall of, of us losing our club. Um, on that note, though, Peter, I'd like to say that the club is very supportive. Uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the clubhouse itself are very supportive. The United Club, it's called now, a home of Adamstown Rosebud. Uh, very supportive. Uh, uh, Chris McDougall, the, the, the secretary manager, uh, general general manager, uh, loves football, loves Rosebud. You know, and he, they're they're very supportive of, of our club. Um, and a twist on that. It's probably it's owned by Con Constantine, you know, who who was uh, who owned the, the Jets and, and won the first uh, uh, you know A League title for uh, for Newcastle. I think there's 31, I count up to 31, you know, premierships and and, and silverware that Adamstown Rosebud Football Club has, has won, uh, you know, uh, over the 127 years of our existence. And, uh, 121 of those years were in the top flight. Um, We've had we've produced 28 internationals um, with with you know the likes of, of Ray Bartz and Cole Curran and Joe Sankowski and and probably our greatest one Je Graham Jennings you know 86 caps for Australia um, and probably at the, the latest was probably Stu Michalik you know and Stu Michalik's got a uh, you know he, he he still makes himself known around here and he does help the club uh, you know a great deal. So, uh, yeah, no, it's good. Mate, you mentioned there Ray Bartz, and I don't want to single out one person, but I'll, I'll make special mention of Ray Bartz. Off the field, he went on to uh, have his own soccer shop going forward he as well in the, sure in the later part. He sure did, mate, and uh, a very popular soccer yeah. shop. I remember myself going in there and buying, buying, buying boots. Out, <laughs> putting out football <laughs> boots, yeah, and, and Ray would look after you, you know. He's a great man and great footballer. Uh, yeah, no, he's... Uh, He's always there when you need him, that's yeah, for sure. definitely. Mate, why do you think the club was able to, you know, deliver so many internationals? Uh, about the culture of the club, I guess, that speaks... Yeah, I, I think so. It's the, the club culture, we, we, we like to, uh, uh, you know, make sure that our, our players enjoy themselves, mm. you know, and we like to look after them, and, and, and we want them to walk away from the club knowing, you know... Uh, 
well, ha having a good time, you know, knowing that they've had a good time at Understand Rosebud and, and hopefully have them back in some other capacity later on in life. But uh, yeah, it's all about it's all about our players and, and, and the care of our players, and uh, you know, and of course we we do like success, and and that's probably our goal is, is to be the most successful club again, and, you know, restore our position on the t on the top of the, um, uh, the 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 soccer pecking order, I suppose. In, in Australia, yeah. I guess we push forward uh, a number of years. I guess let's go back to only last year, 2015. Of course, the club's now in the National Premier League. Um, how's the crowds? Uh, you know, is the local area supportive of that move? Yeah, we, we've got a, a great support from the business people. You know, in Adamstown, um, I'd like to see a lot more people come back and 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 their, their next players and. Um, yeah, committee-wise, we've got a great committee. You know, positive people, um, but we, I suppose, the we we need to keep those people in the club for a, a, a longer period. We we can't have people leaving, and you know, and and I've basically said to the committee, if if you know, you go to if you're going to leave this club, you make sure you've got somebody as good as yourself or better to replace you. Don't just walk out on this club, and and uh, that's sort of like the motto we we work to. Um, I haven't said that they're great people and um, we're looking to you know bring this club back to being self-sustainable um, uh, and, and being the best again yeah. you mentioned there bringing it back to the the old days of self-sustainable have you got a, a method in place how you might approach that <laughs> or is that a great or question is... <laughs> we have got a couple of, of couple of methods and uh, uh, you know it's uh, we'd like to buy that, that clubhouse back. <laughs> that would be a good start. That's on the but, bucket list. <laughs> yeah, that's on the bucket list, yeah. That's on the fantasy list. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's just being able to improve every year and, and grow every year. And, and, and eventually, you know, um, you know, uh, hope that we've got something to work with. You know, work, work, have something to work with each year and grow that. Um, but, yeah, we would like to... Uh, uh, you know, purchase that clubhouse back. So that 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 that's you know, uh, a, you know, a goal, I suppose. Definitely. Yes. Uh, I've said this to a number of uh, presidents in our football series, as far as the juniors go. Um, how how how's your stock? Uh, are you seeing a lot of younger kids getting involved in this in this decade? Yeah, for sure, and it's it's great to watch too. You've, you're watching the best kids in Newcastle playing each week, and and I, I mentioned the other week I went down to watch the 13s play. And uh, I was getting more enjoyment watching them than our first grade, and that—that's that, <laughs> at the moment. But having said that, the, the, our first grade is our flagship team, and, yeah. and it's all about our first grade. Um, we we cared a lot about our juniors and, and, and our youth, and uh, but uh, uh, it's at our club and, and the culture of our club is it's all about first grade, and and, and they're the ones that are, you know we're, we're looking to, to to succeed. They're they're the ones that have to win. Uh, the development for the, the, the kids, you know, you, as long as they're, they're playing good football and, you know, and, and, and winning is it's good, but it's not, you know, paramount. But if, when it comes to first grade, we want them to win. And, and you know, so uh, all, most of our resources go into, into the first grade side. Right, as we look around the ground here at Adamstown, a lot of uh, memorable moments, I guess, here. Uh, what's a few that stand out for you? Oh, I mean, probably... 18, uh, not 18, 89, I'm not that old, 1989, <laughs> 1989, our centenary year, we, we uh, uh, I was playing for Adamstown Rosebuds, we'd won the, the, the premiership by about 15 points, we just absolutely, there was no team that could touch us, uh, except to the grand final, we had, we had a bit of, you know, uh, grand final jitters I suppose, but, uh, uh, but that 1989, when we celebrated our 100th year, and uh, we played against the Australian team, uh, and we beat them. So we're probably one of the one, one of the only clubs that have actually beaten the Australian national team. Um, that that was a highlight for me. And, and but probably the the biggest one for me was was promotion back into the first division uh, with uh, the team under Glenn Chapman. Uh, it was sensational. It was very um, uh, emotional, very emotional. But uh, and. Uh, uh, a, a dear Rosebud person died that, that year, Trudy Paulick, and uh, she was fantastic for you know for the club. She loved the club, and uh, it was great to 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 win and and be promoted. Yeah, that was probably the most 
memorable for me. And, yeah. and touching moment yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, mate, football coaches, they come, they go. You've had some good ones. You've had some oh so good ones. Yes, yeah. Um, a, few, a few good ones that you can <laughs> rattle off for the viewers. Well, yeah, look, the greatest coach of all at Adam Sam Rosebud was probably Neville Power. He was a fantastic footballer and uh, he was a great coach. He'd won, I think, won, it was five or six premierships in a row. Feet and it's when when Adam Stan were, were untouchable, you know, in in the, in the late eighties and, and early nineties, and um, yeah, he was a, he was a fantastic coach and a, and a fantastic person as well. Mate, here the ground looks very lush. I, I guess you know a lot of people take the ground surface for granted. You know, they come here, they watch football, but as you said to me before we came on, yeah, you know, a lot goes on behind the scenes getting this ground ready for game day. Yep, yep. It's all part of uh, uh, looking after the players and giving them a good surface to play off mm. feet uh, of this uh, very hallowed ground. Uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, so we, we, we oversowed the ground because we had drainage put in, the council put drainage in and gave us the ground back late in, in April. So we had to get s some sort of cover. So we, we, mm. we, we oversowed with, with rye grass and- Yeah, so it is, cool right, it is rye grass. Yeah. Yeah, the base is Kaikuyu, Pete. Yeah. And then, and, and, and uh, yeah, the, the, the rye grass is a cool season grass, which is active in the winter time. So uh, it'll grow and recover, where the Kaikuyu, once it's damaged, it, it won't, in, in the winter time when it's dormant, it won't recover. So at least we've got, we've got a good cover this time of year. But uh, next year, it's going to look like Wembley, mate. Wembley? Yeah. It's oh, you've got to love awesome that. next year. Uh, got the, <laughs> you got the patterns ready? We'll get the patterns ready. You can see what the boys like. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I guess that fascinates a lot of viewers because when you select grass, you, you, you're definitely selecting it not just for the look, but also, I guess, for the flow of the ball. Yeah, for sure, you know. And, and look, and the, the wear, really, with the, the, the amount of play we have on this, this field, um, you know, you, you need a good, you know, wearing grass, you know, a good quality grass. As you, if you went down the sidelines, Pete, and you see where the referees run, yeah. every time they run the same spot on the lines <laughs> and they just wear this groove in the ground. Is that you right? You know, you can't get them to move. They won't move. <laughs> They're just stuck on this one track. I've asked them many times. There's no reason why they have to be there either. It's just the way they're taught, they tell me. And they can't change sides because they're a bit like... Zoolander, they can't look left or they can't look right, so they've got to use the same sides every time. Right, okay then. That's so not, that's when you see those so wear areas down the sidelines, yeah, that's, that's, that's to our referees. There you go. Some might say they would have had magnets on the back of their feet, but no, it's not that. It's that's not that. Thing. It's, it's just, they, can't, they can't look left, Pete. They've got to look right. They're taught to look right, apparently. They've got the blinkers referee. on. Yeah. Right, okay. So but there's nothing in the rules to stop them from using the other lines, but it's the way they've been taught. There you go. We've covered everything in the last few minutes. Don't worry about the history of the club. We're turning it into a gardening segment. We're turning it into are, a, uh, yes. anything that you want it to be. Exactly. Going forward from here, you touched on the club is the main priority. Uh, what else is in the, in the big plan? Is that the number one priority? Oh, it's, off the yeah, the, look, the, the, the plan is to keep growing our club and, and to mm -hmm. make it, you know, self-sustainable as we've mentioned but it's also to uh, enjoy the club and, and enjoy the camaraderie and and and, and the success to, together and and um, um it's uh, yeah and it's, it's all about enjoyment because if you, you're not enjoying it it's uh, you shouldn't be doing it I don't, I don't think you know i think you should get in there do it and 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 always think of the club first. <laughs> the club comes <laughs> the first one. before any other individual. <laughs> well, that's a great motto to have. And I was going to ask you if there's any youngsters, you know, in the area, just wondering which club to join. Come to Adamstown because it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. That's exactly right, mate. It's it's nice, nice and central. Uh, the committee and, and, and the members and the supporters are great, you know, and, and we're here to have a good time. So and you get to and, play uh, on some rye some grass. Good, and get on to fly, play on some rye grass. And it's a little bit, a little bit <laughs> skinny. If you like the ball to, to skim, this is the place this to is come. This is the place to come. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for taking us on a walk down memory lane. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, good luck for the weekend. Thanks a lot, Pete. Appreciate it.